This project explores the relationship between Mātauranga a iwi, Māori identity, Mātauranga Māori, Māori knowledge, and kaupapa Māori theory. This is an area that is not well understood. In the past, these have often been treated as separate concepts, but in fact, they are interdependent. The Ranga framework, developed by Professor Wurumu Doherty, draws on them to provide a comprehensive approach to engaging Māori learners. Mātauranga Aiwi was tribal knowledge, and what I was trying to illustrate through there was that if we look at the language, the language shows the indicator, it's an indicator to the, the knowledge that sits in there. So words were not just simply picked out of the sky. The, everything within Māori is, is, is intentional, even down to the use of words. The, and if we look at the words and we begin to break them down, there are the clues to the understanding that sits in behind there. And largely where I come up with the Ranga framework. I mean, it was a theoretical model that I used to illustrate that within each iwi there is a deep epistemology that sits in there, and the language is just showing you those indicators. The key idea behind the Ranga framework is that local context is really important in literacy and language learning. We have to understand the world view that sits behind the language. My interpretation of local context to me is, is around what I call contextual, and to me it's hugely important. Uh, and within Māori we use the word, the word tūranga waiwai, which is your physical place of standing. But I also believe there is also a cognitive tūranga waiwai. There is a cognitive place, comfort zone that we all stand on. And we all have, if, if we're uh, left to feel uncomfortable about something, there's a place we revert to in our mind to regather our thoughts. And to me, that's that comfort, that's that tūranga waiwai, that cognitive one. And to me, the context creates that. The context allows these people to see, this is where I am, in connection to the world that sits around me. Uh, where I spent uh, many years teaching, the number of times students would ask me, what does this have to do with me? In essence, they're trying to connect themselves to this piece of content, a piece of knowledge they're trying to learn. To me, context creates that platform. It creates a platform so that there's a level of comfort, there's a level of confidence that they can then begin to engage in other forms of learning. Adding in the richness of local tribal knowledge can be crucial for engaging learners. It gives them the confidence, uh, and I use the example, if I go back to sort of, and I go back to our, our four key uh, members of parliament, first Māori members of parliament, who again grew up in a world very different to here, and yet were very able to hold on to their identity as who they were as Māori, as well as engaging in a very non-Māori world. And to me, the thing that gave them that comfort and that ability to do that was that they were very clear on what their context was as who they were as Māori. The Ranga framework has a number of strands. The first strand is that of multi-centric non-Māori knowledge. Then comes kaupapa Māori theory, followed by mātauranga Māori, generic forms of Māori knowledge, principles and values. A further dimension is added by the iwi-centric world of knowledge and its foundation of local identity, all this is situated in the rohe, or landscape. The diagram I had with the, the horizontal and the vertical was largely to describe the relationship of kaupapa Māori theory uh, in the sense that it is a political tool. Often at times it's been confused as knowledge uh, and to me it's simply it is a political tool to take account of the unequal power relations that exist with Māori knowledge and non-Māori knowledge forms. So running left to right you've got generic knowledge Sitting underneath that, you've got mātauranga Māori, and those two forms of knowledge I've described as decontextual. They simply exist without a context. Now, a number of people have challenged me on the notion that an element cannot exist without a context, and I agree. And my argument to them is that when we look at the generic knowledge, or Pākehā knowledge, it doesn't have a context, it has contexts. And then if we choose a word within English, you'll find it, it either has a German, French, or Latin root to it, and then within that, the intent of those words become lost and confused with the contexts that sit behind it. Then when we apply it to mātauranga Māori, again, which I call decontextual, there are elements and there are questions that are raised in mātauranga Māori that cannot be answered there. To me, there is, when you ask for an explanation on something, the explanation you're given, my argument is not Māori. It belongs to that particular tribal group. In the Ranga framework, each tribe has its own version of knowledge, mātauranga a iwi. It's just creating the, 
the, the difference and the distinction there because if I gave you a Māori answer, then you may fall into the trap of thinking all Māori do this and then by default we're back into that hegemonic approach where you take an answer that is for this particular iwi, for this particular tribal grouping of people, and then because you assume it's for Māori, you then apply it over this particular tribal grouping of Māori here, and hence we have the hegemony of applying someone else's values, rules and principles over someone else. The interaction of each tribe with its environment shapes its language, expressions and epistemology. The Ranga framework uses Mataranga a iwi to add depth and breadth to Mataranga Māori. Iwi-centric knowledge is linked to people's environment and identity. If it's new to you, or if it's new to the iwi, you're there. Yep. As you begin to understand it, you're doing that bit. Yep. And then when you do understand it, you're in this area here. Because the word mato just simply means, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yep. And then when you're in that area, a lot of us stay in there. Yep. And then every now and then our leaders come up into this particular area here. How does all this relate to language and literacy learning? Language and context holds the key to deeper understanding and authentic knowledge. Under the Ranga framework, the word Ranga or strand is common to all four elements of the learning cycle. Ranga tahi, youth or learner, Ranga hau, research, mātou Ranga, knowledge, Ranga tira, leader or chief. The aim of the Ranga model is to move learners to the next stage of learning. By exposing the youth or rangatahi to different forms of knowledge, we can expand their world view. This is the rangaho stage. Once they are in this space, they can engage with other ideas and gain more profound levels of understanding and clarity. This is the maturanga stage of the cycle. At the final stage of the cycle, the rangatira stage, learners are confident in their knowledge. They can unite all the theories under one knowledge strand. And I intentionally used the word ranga, and I had the weaving, the interweaving, because the word ranga means to interweave, to weave. Uh, and it describes strands, and it comes from the word raranga, to weave. And I took the word ranga out, and so I had strands, horizontal and vertical interweaving with each other. And then I applied that to the four words that are used largely around learning. Rangatahi, rangahau, matauranga, and rangatira. Four words that you hear used a lot. And simply all as I did was I, I lay them out in a circle and using my, as I, my interpretation of them from a mātauranga a iwi perspective, each of those words has a constant theme, constant element of ranga in it. It has a strand. The first one, rangatahi, is describing a singular strand, a particular singular world view that we all have as we grow up in. It's the world, it's the environment that we're in that informs our thinking. If we come into contact from people from another environment that are another way of thinking and doing, we kind of look at them as slightly being strange or slightly off, or we, we disagree with their particular worldview in that rangatahi stage. As we grow and mature, we begin to understand they have a particular worldview, they have a particular knowledge system that is for them. And then when we're in that phase, which I've described as rangaho, ranga, strand, ho, new strands, new ideologies. As we move in and out of that, comes with it a level of maturity and a level of sort of clarity, which again, the word mato, which prefaces matauranga, is within Māori, is something that is profound clarity. You've, you've reached, you know, you've had an epiphany. There's a, there's a profound level of clarity has occurred. So to me, that is the interpretation of the word matauranga. Mato ranga. Clarity, mato ranga, other strands. You have a profound level of identity, sorry, level of understanding of other ideologies. And then coming out of there, as you're, if you go from your singular strand to rangaho, you explore other worldviews, you reach a level of clarity. As you reach that level of clarity, you come out into the level of, of you become a master at it. Hence the word rangatira. These concepts should be applied to the classroom. The class arrives at the rangatahi stage and needs to be helped to move to the rangaho stage. When true learning is occurring, it results in rangatira, or mastery. And to me, it's, I've loosely called it a, a tūhoi cognitive development cycle. In essence, and, and the overlying element to it is that context matters when we're learning and teaching. So the context that you become a master in, that you, re, you reach rangatira status in, is for that particular context. When you engage in a new context, 
that is totally foreign to you, you're back at the rangatahi. So you go through the cycle again to bring yourself back up to a level of understanding, of mastery of that, that particular topic. So to me, it's, it's moving away from the linear faction that when you learn something, you become a master, and then by that becoming a master in that, you're then applied as a master of all things, uh, which we know is, is not true. The Ranga Framework shows that tribal knowledge that relates to the landscape, the history, and the lived reality of the learner is a powerful learning tool. Wurumu helps learners extract the meaning and purpose of Māori words. He encourages them to understand the knowledge system that sits under language. On this project, tribal knowledge has become a vital starting point for Māori learners to engage with other forms of knowledge. Some of the, the illustrations are used to convey what I describe as contextual knowledge. When we look at the word kauri, it has the word ka, which is simply a particle, sentence starter, uri, to be related. So that tree is reminding us that we are related, that we have a responsibility to each other. We have a responsibility in, in our own particular world views to protect the other. Then when we come down into the, the pirita, which is the superjack vine, again, it's illustrating to us how we must keep a connection with each other, where that vine grows from this particular point, grows to the next tree, takes hold, takes root, spreads its vine to the next tree, wraps around that tree, Next one, next one, next one. In essence, what it does is, as the word describes, pirita, it pulls us together. If you begin to unpack these words, there's a knowledge system that sits in there that these words are merely just sort of windows and indicating to you this depth of knowledge that sits in there. I think to me, it's, it's the, the notion of context matters. And it's understanding that each of these uh, students that you come into contact with come from a particular context. And to me, we must understand what that context is, as opposed to coming in and simply walking straight into the classroom, good morning, and straight into teaching. No understanding of where your students are coming from. Hence where I came up with the rangatahi, where teacher and student begin at the rangatahi. They must go through a, a phase of understanding each other, which is the rangahau. As they move in and out of that rangaho stage, they'll get to an area where they, there's a profound clarity where the other is coming from, because each has a role to play in there. If we don't give the time and the space to allow those roles to develop, we're going to have trouble. So in essence, the role that we're trying to create in there is one of teacher and learner. And in essence, when that, those roles are established, then the teaching element is what's elevated to rangatira status. So then we can get the true teaching begin to occur. Te ao tafito, te ao onamata, te ao anamata. How we begin to keep these two worlds coming together. The world of yesterday with the world of today. And it's how we actually engage these two elements together. <laughs>